All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to look at the topic of linear inequalities. A linear inequality is basically an equation, but unlike a standard equation, in an inequality, it will have a greater than, or greater than or equal to, or less than or less than or equal to sign, okay? So that's the big fundamental difference here. The other big difference is that you'll always get a defining amount or value here for what x equals to okay which i'll get on to in a bit x is an element of a set now the big difference actually between an inequality and an equation is with an inequality you're not solving for one value rather you're solving for a range of values which are greater than or less than whatever x is all right the way we actually solve a linear inequality is pretty much the same as an equation but there's only one or two extra steps that we have to remember okay well it's it's not too hard all right so let's look at a couple of examples in fact let's look at the uh, yeah let's look at the example here okay so we have 3x plus 4 is equal to 3 okay so basically we're going to treat this as if it's an equation all right so we're going to do all the things that we would normally do for an equation and see how we get on. So first thing I want to do is I, I still I'm looking for my x. I'm using equals for simplicity, but x on one side, and then my numbers on the other side. I'm still looking for this. That's still my main goal. Okay, so I need to manipulate this by adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing the equation. Okay, so first thing to do is get rid of this four on the left hand side. So including my stabilizers, I have a plus four to get rid of it. Do the opposite minus 4. So 4 minus 4 is 0. So 3x is greater than or equal to x minus 4. So 3x is greater than or equal to minus 1. All right. Now, same as normal. I want to get, I don't want 3 times x, I want 1x. So how do I change my 3x into 1x divided by 3? Why am I dividing? Because the 3 was multiplying by, and we do the opposite. Whatever you do one side and most of the other, so our final answer is x is greater than or equal to minus three, sorry, minus a third. Well, now let's say if this was x was an element of n, and this is where sometimes students get confused because they forget what these letters mean, okay? In first year you learn what this letter means. The capital N is the set of natural numbers. And a natural number is a whole positive number okay so x is greater than minus a third how we would illustrate this actually is on a number line so if i'm drawing a number line of the natural numbers it's going to be a line with an arrow going this way there's no arrow going this way because it doesn't go into the negative values one two three four five and so forth so x is greater than minus a third means x is any value which is a natural number bigger than minus a third. Well, which that's actually all the natural numbers. Okay, and that's how we do it. Now let's look at another example, shall we? Okay. So yeah. So 5 minus 2x is less than 9, where x is an element of z, which is the integers. And we'll get back to that towards the end. So first things first, same as normal. Stabilizers move anything that's not an x to the right-hand side by cancelling it out on the left. So we have a plus 5 here, so minus 5 to both sides. Okay, so 5 minus 5 is 0, so we have minus 2x is less than or equal to 9 minus 5. Tidying this up again, 9 minus 5 is 4. And this here now is where we see the difference between an inequality and equation we have a minus two here okay so i don't want this to be minus two x i just want it to be x so how would i change this minus two x into x well to change it from two x to x i divide it by two but i want to change it from a minus to a plus so you have to remember your rules for integers folks okay when we multiply or when we divide a minus by minus, we get a plus. So I divide by minus 2. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So minus 2 divided by minus 2 is plus 1. 
and 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, but 4 divided by minus 2 is minus 2. Now, this is the big difference. When we multiply or divide by a negative, if you can't know the spell here, by a negative value, we change the direction of our inequality. When we multiply or divide by a negative value, we change the direction of our inequality. What does that mean? Well, the direction of our inequality was going this way, less than, x is less than. We're changing the direction because we divided by a minus number. So our final answer is x is greater than minus 2. That is our final answer. Now, when you do an inequality, you always illustrate your answer on a number line. Even if the question doesn't explicitly say it, you have to do it, okay? So, we have minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Z. Z is the integers. which are the whole, positive, and negative numbers. So we're saying now x is any whole positive or negative number bigger than minus 2. So that's going to be minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there you go. Note that because they're integers, they're whole numbers only, I illustrate it in a line, which is the top. Okay? So, I'll just do a couple more examples and see how we're getting on here. So, step one. Same as any other equation. If this was an equal sign, we'd still be doing all these things. I want to get rid of any values on the left-hand side that are numbers, that aren't x's. So I've got a plus one here, so to get rid of it, do the opposite. Minus one to both sides. So, minus one plus one is zero. We get 2x minus, or sorry, is that going to equal to 7 minus 4x minus 1. So 2x is less than or equal to 7 minus 1 is 6 minus 4x. We don't subtract the 1 from the 4x because that's a 1, not a 1x. You only add or subtract numbers from numbers, letters or letters, okay? So we're, we're getting close, but there's a problem. We have this x variable on the right-hand side that we want to get rid of. Same again with our stabilizers. Do the opposite. I have a minus 4x here I want to get rid of. So I add plus 4x to the right, but whatever I add to one side, I must add to the other side. So on the right-hand side, we have 2x plus 4x is less than or equal to, well, minus plus is gone, 6. 6x is equal to 6. So, But I don't want 6x's, I want 1x. So I divide by 6. Why? Because 6 divided by 6, folks, is 1. So we are left with x, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. Now, what about this? I was saying earlier when I divided that I, in the previous example, I changed the direction of this sign. I do not change the direction this time, because the rule was when we multiply or divide by a negative value. That's the rule. I divided by plus 6, not minus 6. So it stays x is less than or equal to 1. Illustrating on my number line. x was an element of or, which is the real numbers. The real numbers are basically all numbers except for the imaginary numbers, which you learn about in fifth year. So basically all the whole positive and negative numbers, including fractions and decimals. Okay, So x is less than 1. Okay, so we have two. I always like to go one past the values that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to include in my number line. It just makes it neater and easier to read. So basically you're saying x is less than or, or equal to 1. But the element of or, so that means it's well, less than or equal to 1. So it's going to include 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. But it's also going to include a half, a quarter, minus 2 and a half, all of the decimals and fractions between these. So how we illustrate that on our number line is a heavy line. 
Okay, so we're doing a heavy line across the number line. Now, it's very important that we look at our inequality sign. Our inequality sign in this instance was saying equal to, less than or equal to. So that was how we illustrated it, okay? If the sign had been saying x is less than 1 and not equal to, we'd have the heavy line going to 1, but we'd have an open circle around 1. So it's every value up to 1, but not including 1, okay? So I'm going to do one more example. I'm going to see if we can find a nice hard one. Um, yeah, actually, that's a good one. So, 2 is less than or equal to 5x minus 6 over 2. So, can't do it. Never done these before. Rules for maths do not change just because the sum looks different, folks. We have done these before. We know how to deal with algebraic fractions. It's not that hard. First thing you do, get rid of your fraction. How do we get rid of the fraction? We multiply by the number on the bottom. Two. So we multiply both sides by two. Because two is on the bottom, you get rid of stuff by doing the opposite. We're dividing by two. The opposite is multiplied by two. So they're going to cancel out. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have 5x minus 6. On the right-hand side, we're going to have 4. By the way, if that had been a minus 2, we multiply the whole thing by minus 2, then this sign would have flipped and would be now in that direction, okay? So don't forget that, okay? That rule is still applying. So now, okay, I have an x on the left, right, and I have numbers on the left. You could say, well, let's move things across, but look, guys, it doesn't actually matter, okay? If I have all my x's on the left or all my x's on the right, it actually doesn't matter for these equations, okay? In fact, what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to show you what would happen either way, okay? So first, we're going to deal with it this way. Get rid of the, of the minus 6 on the right, add plus 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Whatever we do to one side, we must do the other. So we get 6 plus 4 is less than or equal to 5x. 10 is less than or equal to 5x. But I don't want 5x, I want 1x. So we divide both sides by the value in front of x. 5. So x is greater than 2. Okay? Or 2 is less than x. Now, I never included um, x is an element of n, which is our natural numbers, okay? Okay, so 2 is less than x, or x is, so if 2 is less than x, then every, or less than or equal to x, then x is greater than, two, or equal to 2. So basically, it's, Every value to the right of, okay? Now, what if we'd done it the other way? What if we moved the, the 5x across? So, we're someone's this. Okay, well, if I want to get rid of this 5x, I need to do the opposite. So it's going to be minus 5x. Okay? So, they're gone. Okay? So, now you have minus 5x plus 4 is less than or equal to minus 6. Well, now you have a plus 4 on this side that we need to get rid of. So, minus 4, minus 4. So, we're going to minus 5x is less than or equal to... Minus 6 minus 4, okay? Or minus 5x is less than or equal to 6 and 4 is 10. Minus 6 minus 4 is minus 10. It doesn't become a plus because, folks, minus by a minus is a plus, but only for multiplication and division, not for addition or subtraction. So minus 5x is equal to minus 10, okay? But I don't want minus 5x. I want plus x. So I would have had to divide by minus 5. Whatever I do with one side, do to the other. So my ten, minus 10 divided by minus 5. Well, 10 divided by 5 is 2. Minus 5 by minus is a plus. Now, we've divided by a negative number. So as I said, this changes direction. So we would have gotten x is greater than 2. Sorry, greater than root to 2. And oh, look, still the exact same answer. So there you go, folks. That is how you do um, inequalities. Um, do you know, I'm going to do a second bit to this. All right. Let's say we had another bit. So let's. we're going to call this A. We're going to call this a set A. Well, what if they said, okay, we've got a set B. All right. Because you will be asked these questions as well. Make sure you've got this in the frame. Okay, and b is 5x minus 6 over 2. 
less than or equal to 7 where x is an element of n. It's important in this example that both inequalities are in the same set, in this case n. So, get rid of your fraction. Multiply both sides by 2. Okay? Boom, boom, gone. 5x minus 6 is less than or equal to 2 by 7 is 14. Now, yeah, I did that right. We want to get rid of the minus 6 on this side. So we have plus 6 to this side, plus 6 to this side, because 6 minus 6 is 0. But I don't want 5x, I want 1x, divide both sides by 5. x is less than or equal to 4. So my first, so, and let's say they say, we'll find, illustrate the number line, A intersection B. Well, A was X is greater than or equal to 2, and B was X is less than or equal to 4. So if we want to do this in a number line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. X is greater than or equal to 2 would be all these numbers. Okay? X is less than or equal to 4 is all these numbers. A intersection B, the intersection of them all, is going to be just these. 2, 3, and 4. And that's how you do it when there's an intersection. So, quick. So there we go, folks. That's how you do linear inequalities. They're not that difficult, as I said. The only thing you have to remember is this rule here. When we multiply or divide our inequality by a negative value, then the inequality sign changes direction. And, be, and then beyond that... You need to remember what these symbols mean, Z or N, so that way you know what kind of a number line to do. All right? So look, there we go, folks. Thanks a lot. I hope this helps, and keep up the good work.